thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Peter and I'm a meteorologist here at the National Weather Service in the Quad Cities. Today we're going to be taking a look at an extremely vital component of the National Weather Service daily function. Something that I'm sure many of you have heard of but probably don't know too much about. Now the National Weather Service here in the Quad Cities is one of 92 offices across the United States and its territories that launches weather balloons. Now these launches are done twice each day and for here it's around 5 to 6 a.m. and p.m. respectively depending on the time of year. Now at the same time upper air offices from a vast amount of countries and continents as shown here are also launching weather balloons. And this way we're able to get a snapshot of what the entire atmosphere across the world looks like all at once. And it all starts with this. This device here is called a radio sonde. As defined by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, a radio sonde is a small, expendable, battery-powered instrument package that contains sensors to measure and transmit pressure, temperature, relative humidity, and GPS position data every second. The boom seen going out at about a 45-degree angle coming out of the radio sonde body is called a thermistor. A thin rod comes out of the boom at the end, as seen here. Electrical resistance will change along the rod as the temperature changes, which is how we measure temperature values. The sensor on the left side of the radio sonde is called a hygrister, which measures relative humidity. This is done with a plastic piece that is coated with a celluloid resin and dried. This celluloid is sensitive to changes in humidity, and the value is measured based on how much the sensor expands or contracts with the changing water vapor. The pressure and GPS sensors are located inside the radio sonde. Pressure is measured using a cell that will expand or contract in response to the changing pressure. The GPS sensor inside will give location, which the computer will then use for calculations of wind speed and direction. With the radio sonde, we have our balloon and parachute, which is used to help slow down the radio sonde as it falls back to Earth. Before we begin launching, we enter all of the necessary information into the upper air computer which includes the radio sonde number, balloon type, and how much gas will go into the balloon upon inflation. Then, we enter in the current weather observations from the observing station outside the office, along with the cloud cover information and how that has been changing with time. We then can begin the process of baselining the radio sonde, which is where we just ensure that the temperature, pressure, and humidity sensors are working properly. We also want to make sure we are receiving an acceptable amount of GPS satellite matches, as we need a minimum of at least three for an accurate position calculation. Once we deem everything in the working order, we can go outside. Once the radio sonde is placed at an adequate distance from the upper air shelter, we can head inside to begin inflation of the balloon. After the balloon has been inspected for deformities, we can securely attach it to the nozzle on the inflation table. We do use hydrogen as our gas at this office, so proper precautions must be taken to ensure a safe inflation. The balloon takes roughly seven minutes to fully inflate before it rises and flips the switch to stop the flow of hydrogen. At this point, we seal the balloon, and it's officially connected to the parachute and the radio sonde. As for a neat fact, right now the balloon is roughly about six feet in diameter. After receiving clearance from the lead meteorologist inside and ensuring that all of our sensors and GPS sensors are working properly, we are ready for launch. The balloon will rise about 
11 miles per hour during flight and will gradually expand as the atmospheric pressure decreases. These balloons are capable of reaching heights of about 120,000 feet and can travel quite far depending on the strength of the upper level winds. Here's one for example. As the balloon is in flight, we perform a full quality control of the data that comes in. If everything looks good, then we can send off the information to the National Center for Environmental Predictions in Washington, D.C., which then uses this information for the evening model runs. Here's an example of what the data looks like. This is all located on the Storm Prediction Center observed sounding page. If you're curious as to what all of this means, there's a nice link on the lower left of the page that will provide a nice explanation of the data and calculations. Hey guys, thank you so much for again for tuning in and watching this video. Be sure to give us a like on Facebook, a follow on Twitter, or subscribe to us on YouTube for more weather discussions and content just like this.